So I want to transition now. You're going to hear more about all these topics from us after the break. But I want to do a couple things. I want to double click on an announcement we made this morning about how we will do a lot of this. And one of the backdrops I'm aware of is that there's a lot of cynicism out there about AI. Some people say we might be living in an AI bubble because companies at scale like T-Mobile haven't figured out how to unlock value from it for customers and for our business models. And so today, we announced a unique partnership with OpenAI to create a new kind of engagement model for customers. And this is with the intention of not just slapping on AI to some existing business processes, but actually changing those business processes profoundly so that they can take advantage of this transformative technology. And that is the unlock that will allow us to get benefit from today's technologies at scale. And in order to help you understand that, I'd like to have a conversation about it with none other than the CEO of OpenAI and our friend and partner, Sam Altman. Please welcome Sam. Hey, man. Oh. All right. Before, look, before we get into what we're doing uh, with T-Mobile, I have to congratulate you on the 01 models Thank and you. the preview happening. And maybe you could get this audience sort of settled by telling us what the new stuff is all about, because it's pretty amazing. Yeah, we're, we're extremely excited for this. We've been working on it for a long time. Um, the, the GPT series of models was amazing at sort of system one type thinking, for lack of a more nuanced word. But we knew what we really wanted was systems that could reason. And there's so much value if you can have AI that can reason through more complex problems. You saw a glimpse of that with the GPT-4 models. But O1 really is the first system that can do pretty advanced reasoning. Um, you know, if you give it a difficult programming challenge or a difficult math problem, a difficult science thing you need help with, uh, you can really get pretty extraordinary results. And we believe this is going to unlock, uh, over time, this will look as significant as the GPT series and unlock a huge set of new, very, very valuable use cases. So um, you publicly said that what we're seeing is a preview and it's yeah. going to be rapidly iterated. How's it all going to unfold over the next few months? I think of this as like a, we're at the GPT-2 stage of these new kind of reasoning models. And uh, you will see it over the coming years go up to the GPT-4 equivalent. Um, but even in the coming months, you'll see it get a lot better as we move from 01 preview to 01 which we shared uh, some metrics for in our launch blog post, uh, it's a very significant step forward. And I think one of the many fun things about these moments of new paradigms is that the curve, the improvement curve, is really steep. And so uh, I, you know, things that the model just can't solve right now, in a few months, they'll be able to solve. A few months after that, be able to solve even more. And, and most importantly, uh, well, I don't know about most importantly, importantly, I think we're going to see a whole new set of ways to use these models. When, when we had GPT 3.5, um, it was in the API for a while. And then it was really the chat GPT moment that made people use it a lot. And even then, it took people a while to figure out how to use chat GPT. And it took us a while to build all the other features and add the things that people wanted. Um, so I think we're that early with O1. There will be totally new ways to use it that are not just a chat interface. Uh, it'll take us a while to build those and other people a while to build those. It'll also take users a while to figure out how to use it. And this is pretty different than the GPT models. Um, we have these five levels of AI we talk about. Uh, the first was chatbots. The second, which we've just reached now, is reasoners. Uh, the third is agents. The fourth is sort of innovators, the ability to figure out new scientific information. And the fifth is full organizations. Um, so this move from one to two took a, a while. But I think the most exciting, one of the most exciting things about two is that it enables level three relatively quickly after. And the agentic experiences that we expect this technology to eventually enable, I think, will be quite impactful. So when you and I first met, um, it became kind of obvious we had a shared belief in something, which is there's a lot of work to be done 
by industry to figure out how to use all this to unlock value. Um, that real thinking has to be done inside companies as to how to apply these, you know, thinking about the data state, the business processes themselves, um, in order to show that these transformative technologies, maybe the most transformative in our lifetime, can actually translate to business value at scale. Why did you want to partner with T-Mobile to help unlock all that? Yeah, you know, one of the things I believe is when you sit down in a meeting where you're talking about potential major partnership, you can kind of feel in the first few minutes if you really want to do it or not. <laughs> and I very much felt that sitting down with you. Um, I thought the, the sort of shared belief in what this new technology can do for customers, for people, and kind of just having, you know, better experiences, better lives. Um, the spirit of T-Mobile as an uh, innovative experimental company willing to, excited to jump in with us and figure it out together. Um, that was great. The specific use cases that we talked about, about really improving the sort of customer experience um, and sort of what this can mean for totally reimagining how customer support works. Uh, it was like, I was like, it was, you know, in your office up in Washington and I was just like immediately, I remember leaving and being like, we're going to do this. I'm really excited. Like, let's go. We'll We'll just throw our best people at it. And yeah, the and that's what we're doing, right? So you're, you've got a dedicated team on this. We have a dedicated team on this. And we're working on ways to unlock the power of this um, by really examining the pools of data that are available to get the AI to be able to not just inform our agents like we've been doing with other partners, um, but to deeply understand in real time, what is the be next best action for that customer? Yeah. Now, this phrase, next best action, has kind of like been around a while, but what we're in attempting to do is really, really different from that. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, one of the many things that we're most excited about, that we're exci excited about for this new generation of models is what we can do for personalization uh, for an individual user or customer, and also what we can do for integration, where these models will be able to look at a huge amount of data and use a huge amount of tools and access a huge amount of systems and deliver uh, these hopefully fairly magical experiences. And so as we think about what's possible with IntentCX uh, and this personalization integration coming together, um, I we can dream out pretty far about what it's going to be like for a customer um, and the next best action. And uh, we can even think further out to things we haven't focused on as much. But I was just watching backstage as you talked about the, all the amazing networking work, the network work that you're doing, and what I can imagine these models doing there. You know, it's interesting. A, a more sort of traditional machine learning model or AI model will look at um, and try to pre-program with people what are like the finite number of intentions a customer might have, and then try to pattern match that to a finite number of treatments that yeah. might make sense, versus what this is able to do is more human-like, right? Listen to the customer's actual intentions, totally. which is why we call it intent CX, and then choose a treatment based on massive pools of data oh. that will optimize their success journey with T-Mobile. And so it's not about finite set of intentions, and it's not about a finite set of treatments because it's, it's examining in the background and eventually in real time, massive pools of data. And the good news is it can be inspired by millions and millions of both success and failure cases from prior interactions generated by AIs or humans. Yeah, I think this will be one of these things where no one ever wants to go back to the old way. No customer ever wants the old thing again. This is just gonna be such a better experience. We said in our goal that we wanted to see a 75% reduction in calls offered. That means not just um, intercepting those with a faster, better AI, but also preventing problems. And we can use open AI capabilities to really understand how did these accident chains happen yeah. in the first place? Like what happened that caused somebody to throw their hands yeah. up and finally quit T-Mobile? Totally. Um, I, I think that should be a great fit for what these models can do, and as you mentioned, you have so much data, and I think these models are just so good at making sense of lots of data. So we can, can we talk about data safety? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the questions I know people will have is, all right, so how's this going to work? I mean, you know, if our customers giving their permission for us to do all this stuff, and, and how, you know, in that sense, what we're doing isn't much different than how we're already operating, which is to use your data at T-Mobile to make your T-Mobile experience better. 
But we're getting now OpenAI deeply involved. Um, can you talk about data safety? How is this uh, data not going to escape T-Mobile and yeah. be used to train the wider models? And so I think one thing that is not well understood by OpenAI is that we don't train our models on API customer data. So like that is your data, other customers' data, that's their data. Um, we, can do, uh, we can do custom models for you with that data, uh, or we can do, you know, you can do like in-context learning and not even train the model more on the data. But it's not, you know, this, this is not data that's like improving the base open AI models ever. And so, and why, why not? Like, why don't you need, in other words, how, why, how is it, just shifting gears a minute, how is it that open AI is so far ahead? Like, what, what are you doing differently in this space that's allowing you to develop these models at pace? And now, working with us, you know, to figure out how to unlock yeah. their potential at scale to make customers' lives better and business results better. First of all, thank you for saying that. It's a, a very nice compliment. Um, we build on a gigantic amount of work that has come before us. And you know, the field of AI is an old field that people have been contributing really brilliant ideas to for a long time. And more than that, we, if, if you think about all of the work that had to happen in, throughout human history to discover semiconductors and build chips and networks and these massive data centers, um, we're just doing our one little, little bit on the very top of that. Um, but uh, we try to do it as well as we can, and we try to have a very focused research program. Uh, I think one of the mistakes that other research programs make is they don't have enough conviction and a concentration. It's very easy to copy something once it works. So I think the two ways you can succeed are say, we're going to be a great fast follower, and we're going to like just copy whatever OpenAI does or whatever somebody else does that works. And I don't mean that as negative as it came across, because I think there are a lot of companies that just wait to see what works and then do a very good job of polish and execution. But if you're trying to move the frontier, that's, that's very difficult. And conviction and focus, I think, ac across a lot of people in a very complex environment, uh, that's the best way forward. And so that's what we try to do. We say, OK, we really believe in deep learning. Um, that's our bet. We really believe in uh, a path from where we are to AGI and beyond. But we're willing to get corrected based off of things we learn along the way. And we're going to keep trying to do the next thing in front of us with as much firepower as we can and trust that over time that will compound. Um, and that's really worked for us. And so that's our simple approach. So this partnership represents um, kind of a pattern that OpenAI is you know, now pursuing, which is doubling down in a few areas. You know, we're your benchmark partner when it comes to unlocking the value of all this in industry. But I know you're interested in other areas as well. And since we have a couple of spare minutes, can you talk about what you're excited about? I know you're doing amazing, more verticalized things, not just with us, but you're interested in healthcare. You're interested in a few other areas where these same technologies, with the right kind of yeah. process change that we're doing with Intense CX for industry, for companies like ours all over the world, you're doing in other sectors as well. Can you talk about what you're excited about? Yeah, so first of all, this is one of our most important partnerships, but we hope it inspires a lot of other people to see like really how, what you can do for customers with AI. Like I, th I think this will be just a tremendous new landmark step forward. Um, healthcare is an area, as you mentioned, where I would expect greatness. I, I think you know, most of the world, unfortunately, does not get access to great healthcare and what these models can do for that. Uh, I'm really excited to see someone go build the best imaginable AI medical advisor and make that broadly available. I think that, that'll be a big step forward. Education's another area um, where we, we're seeing great stuff happen already today, um, watching what people have done. I think O1 has only been out for like five days or something, six days maybe. Watching what people have been doing with it is, is, is really remarkable. Uh, and what people used to do with GPT-4 also was pretty good. But if you imagine every student getting personalized tutoring best for them, um, along with the rest of their educational experience, I think that can be huge. An area that I am extremely personally excited for, that I think is still in the future, but we can now see glimpses of it, is AI helping us accelerate scientific discovery. Um, I believe that most of the real sustainable economic growth in the world, life getting better for all of us, that comes very largely from scientific progress and technological progress. And if AI can accelerate that, uh, if it can help us 
invent new stuff, cure diseases, come up with better energy sources, whatever, uh, that'll be a huge win. So um, a minute ago, you said that you're building on a thousand years of capabilities and just doing a tiny little bit of work on top. And uh, that might be one of the most humble things I've ever heard anybody say. You're amazing. What you're doing is amazing. Just thank you for the inspiration and thanks for this partnership that I think has a huge opportunity to unlock at scale uh, how this technology can make customers' lives better and then translate into a, a better business model for all of us. Thank you very much. We're really Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.